Hey, welcome to Hannity. Great news for the United States of America. The economy is booming. After months of projections, the second quarter GDP numbers are officially in with over 4% growth. In other words, our economy is now moving at its fast pace in four years. In moments, we're going to explain what this means for you. Also, we're going to highlight the president's historic economic track record that the rest of the media, the Democrats, are ignoring. And the days of Obama's pathetic economic stagnation are now officially over. Now, today on my radio show, I did interview the president about the roaring economy and so much more. We'll play the highlights. Plus, the countdown to the midterms is on. We are going to show you how the left's new low keeps getting lower and lower and lower. Good news for the country. Oh, that's bad news for them. Also tonight, more progress to report on North Korea. Today, dictator Kim Jong-un, he kept one of his promises. He actually returned dozens of cases containing the remains of U.S. servicemen that were killed abroad during the Korean War. A serious breakthrough, a promise kept. Sit tight, stay tuned. It's time for tonight's breaking news, Friday edition, opening monologue. All right. As a candidate and as president, Donald Trump long promised to spur the American economy and get growth rates back to 4 percent. Many on the left, many in the media, many so-called experts and economists, they mocked him. They said it could not happen. They said a growth rate around 2 percent was the new normal in America. The haters, the left wingers, the Democrats are all proven wrong. Today, the Commerce Department officially announced that the second quarter GDP grew at a whopping pace of 4.1 percent. That's more than double the average yearly growth under Obama. In fact, under President Obama, the yearly GDP growth never even made 3 percent. The first president in U.S. history not to have a year of 3 percent GDP growth. Now, this is just a key piece of an American economy that is now booming everywhere you turn. The overall unemployment rate now is 4 perspective. The average unemployment rate under Obama, 7.4 percent. Under President Trump, African-American unemployment is at its now lowest rate ever at 6.5 percent, a record low Hispanic unemployment rate in America, their lowest recorded at 4.6 percent. Women in the workforce, even lower at 4 percent. And by the way, 14 states have record low unemployment. Consumer confidence at a 17-year high. Home ownership rate is up significantly. The amount of Americans on food stamps is down by millions. And there are now literally more jobs available in America than there are people on unemployment. Basically an economic miracle turnaround. Oh, yeah. And we're negotiating better trade deals all over the world. No trade wars. Oh, including this week when President Trump and the head of the European Union agreed to push for zero tariffs, barriers and subsidies between the two trading partners. So just think just a short time ago under Obama, he gave us 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more Americans in poverty, the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s, the worst home ownership rate in 51 years, the worst recovery since the 40s. And on top of this, oh, yeah, he took on more debt than every other president before him combined. Earlier today on my radio show, President Trump had this to say about America's record setting economy. Take a listen. A big factor, though, Sean, was regulation. And obviously a big factor was the taxes. But a lot of this, uh, really, the taxes are going to help in the future. I look so forward to seeing the next quarter because this is so sustainable. This is going to go for a long time. For the economy, we can go a lot higher. And, you know, people don't talk. We have $21 trillion in debt. When this really kicks in, we'll start paying off that debt like it's water. Uh, we will start paying that debt down. We're $21 trillion, a number that is, you know, unthinkable. Uh, but that will go down very quickly because the numbers with growth and the kind of growth that we've produced, the 4.1 can actually go higher. I look forward to seeing next quarter because I think that the 4.1 is just a stepping stone. But when we make good trade deals, Sean, it's going to have a huge impact on GDP growth. Mm -hmm. And the numbers will be so big that you'll actually start paying down debt in very large chunks. It'll go quickly. Oh, bad news for the media and Democrats. Oh, because they want their power back. And the more successful America is, the chances of them getting that power back, yeah, it gets reduced every day.
Now, there's huge quarterly GDP growth. It is great news for every American. Not only does it prove that tax cuts have actually worked and always work, but it's also clear evidence that the president is keeping his promises, something that's rare in Washington to you, the American people. It's important to keep in mind, we are now appro approaching the most important midterm elections in our country's history, as far as I'm concerned. By the way, Steve Bannon will talk about it later, but without a doubt, Democrats, they'll be up to the same old predictable dirty tricks and tactics. To them, it doesn't matter what the economy is doing. Instead, they want you to believe that Republicans are monsters, that they're racist and sexist and misogynic and, and xenophobic and homophobic, Islamophobic, that they want dirty air and water, even though they drink it and breathe it. And they want to uh, literally throw granny over a cliff and they want to kill children. Earlier today, I asked the president about that and so much more. Here's his answer. The Democrats want to raise everybody's taxes. They want to give back these massive tax cuts that we got and reforms that are so good for everybody, but the tax cuts. So they want to raise people's taxes. They want to open up borders. They want to get rid of ICE. I mean, the things they're doing are so destructive. We're not, we won't have a country. So uh, they want they want their crumbs back. Well. Yeah, you know, they yeah, want no, their crumbs uh, back. They want open borders. They want Obamacare. Yeah. They want to impeach you, and they want to stop all investigations into deep corruption. All right, the president's right. And ahead of the midterms, it is very clear that the left, they really have no plan to improve the lives of, oh, the forgotten men and women. We lived eight years under economic failure and stagnation. What, you want to take it back? You want the crumbs back? Really? You want to impeach Trump? Is that what you want to do? You want to preserve the disaster of Obamacare where every American didn't keep their doctor and didn't keep their plan and they're not paying less? They want to eliminate ICE. They want open borders. Oh, they want to stop the investigations into what was the biggest abuse of power by the deep state in American history. So with 101 days to go as these midterms get close, the left's rhetoric their conduct is only going to get worse and worse and worse. And, of course, they're willing accomplices in the media that just echo each other. Now, President Trump's successful presidency is literally driving them insane. By the way, this week they were really in rare form. Total insanity. They wake up every day. How can I hate Trump today? Take a look. So I am calling on everyone right now who understands what's at stake, who understands who... Kavanaugh is, in a moral moment, there is no bystanders. You are either complicit in the evil, you are either contributing to the wrong, or you are fighting against it. Jay-Z, prolific rapper, prolific philosopher, I'm taking a quote from him, you know, Putin has got Donald Trump big pimping, pimping, big pimping Donald Trump right now. It was Donald Trump working with advanced knowledge to be part of an international conspiracy. No. He was furious because he found out Melania was watching CNN instead of Fox, which when you, you think about it is probably her way of cheating on him. And this week in person, the harassment of Trump allies continued. First it was, you know, Secretary Nielsen. Then it was White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders and Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and his wife, the Transportation Secretary. And now, yeah, now they're going after Sean Spicer because he has a book out that people want to buy. And on Wednesday, literally shouted down by one of these leftists at a book signing. Take a look. Hey, Sean, you're a real piece of garbage. And I hope you look around and you see all these empty seats and you realize even in New York City, people will not come and pay money to hear you speak. I've read the reviews. It's a garbage book. You're as stupid as you look. It's a garbage book, and you're a garbage person. You lied as press secretary. Now you're lying in your book. I've read the reviews. The Wall Street Journal called you a liar. I wish I was wrong in this prediction, but you can expect this kind of behavior, this kind of rhetoric from the left, and it's only going to get worse and worse as we get closer to the midterms in November. Why? Because they want their power back at all costs. And they think the louder they get, the more effective they'll be. 
And finally tonight, we end with some positive developments out of the Korean Peninsula. Kim Jong-un, he did keep his commitment to President Trump in the U.S., and he did return the remains of U.S. servicemen killed decades ago in the Korean War. Listen to this. We did meet. We had a great meeting, a very, very great meeting. I mean, I think you could have lost 50 million people more. Uh, if you think that Seoul is 28 million people, it's right on the border. You know, people say hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands. We're, we're talking about 50, 60, 100 million people could have been wiped out and lost. We had a great meeting, uh, historic. And among other things, where the remains are starting to come back, missiles have been stopped. We don't have rockets and missiles shot over Japan. Uh, the hostages, we got them back. Even before I left, we got them back. Uh, nuclear testing, no more. Uh, rocket testing, no more. So many things have changed. And, you know, uh, one thing, all of their propaganda material and the propaganda, which has been up for years, propaganda, the signs, the music, it's all stopped. It's all been taken down. So many positive things have happened. And, you know, we have time. We have, There's no rush. I, I told my people, don't rush. We have sanctions on. We haven't taken any sanctions off. And we hope, uh, I look forward to the time when we do take the sanctions off, because when that happens, a lot of good things will have happened on the other side. Oh, and he's not try, trying to bribe a dictator. This is more tangible progress out of the president's diplomatic efforts with little rocket man Kim Jong-un, and at the very least, an important moment for all of those who did lose their loved ones in the Korean War. And tonight, the negotiations to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula continue, and we'll update you on everything that transpires. But in the meantime, no rockets have been fired since December over Japan. It's not a threat to the region. Uh, it looks like fire and fury, and my button's bigger than yours, and ours actually works, is actually working. Oh, and we did get our hostages out, and there was the dismantling of one of the nuclear test sites. Here with reaction. The author of the number one New York Times bestseller this week, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. Number one on the New York Times bestseller list. You know her as Judge Jeanine Pirro. And the author of another New York Times bestseller, The Geraldo Show, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera. Uh, congratulations to Hi. both of you. Uh, Judge Jeanine, good for you. Um, we're proud of you and, and so well-deserved. I know how hard you work. Geraldo, your book has been out. Look at Haral, such a great... You know, Haral, that brings something to my mind. You've always said, and we disagree on immigration, and I don't want to hear it today about immigration, although you agree with the wall. <laughs> you do agree. But you actually keep saying, and I'm, I love this about you, even though that we don't agree on everything. You keep saying, I want this president to succeed because I want my country to succeed. I don't feel that from the Democratic Party. They're not happy today about these GDP numbers. You know, they would applaud if the president stumbled on the sidewalk, I, I think, Sean. They, there is a hatred of Donald Trump that is something that is almost unprecedented. It is extraordinary how people are actively rooting for the president and the presidency to fail. I, I think that it is uh, it's selfish, it's narcissistic, it's, it's so uh, uh, pedestrian and, and, and partisan. It, it really is uh, one reason that politics is, has such a foul stench. But I think that the president could help himself more. You started the program with these great economic numbers. The thing about these economic numbers, a rising tide is lifting all ships. Americans are doing better than ever. Wages are going up. There are more jobs than, than people seeking jobs. But, but at its core, this is also a tremendous civil rights uh, uh, movement by, by President uh, Trump. Bingo. He Very is important. doing more for the inner city. He's doing more for the inner city than all of the liberals and the wishy-washy and come on and socialism and all the rest of it. Black unemployment, historic lows. Hispanic unemployment at, at historic lows. Were I on the president's team? I would say this is what you focus on. Say this every day, every single day. We're not getting nuked from North Korea. And, and look what we're doing for the cities. Look what we're doing for the constituency that voted for my opponent. We are doing more than all of these liberal programs combined, John. You know, Geraldo's right on the money, but I, I've said, Judge, that if the president cured cancer at this point, seriously, I, I'm, I really believe it. If the president cured cancer and gave every American $30 million, the media and Democrats would still hate this guy. If he adopted their agenda, that, which failed, they would still hate him. 
Well, there's no question, Sean, that the, the hatred toward this president is unparalleled in American history. And there is not one metric that has suffered under this president. We are better off in every possible metric. I remember when President Obama said, all manufacturing jobs, that's a thing of the past. We now have 400,000 new manufacturing jobs in this country. We now have unemployment, and I won't repeat all of the good things that have been said. But here's the truth. You know, Geraldo says that president should talk more about, you know, this civil rights issue of helping the people who have been forgotten. But the truth is, Geraldo, he can talk about it from the highest mountains and the press wouldn't report it. But the American people instinctively understood that this was a man, this Donald Trump, who had never run for, for any office in his life, instinctively understands the plight of the hardworking American man and woman. And so we gave him a chance to use his words. We had nothing to lose. He said, what do you and have now to lose? every right. metric has improved. That's right. You know, and, and that's I'm what wrong, the American though, people is... think. And, you know, every day he takes incoming. And every day I realize more than ever, this man is a force of nature. He can he can handle anything and keep fighting for us. You know, Geraldo, this is a really good point. Every election, it's the same thing from the Democrats. Racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you know, throw granny over the cliff, scare Americans. You know, give me one idea that Democrats, besides impeachment, keeping Obamacare, open borders, and they want their crumbs back. One <laughs> idea that they're offering the American people that would that w they would deserve us to go back to what? To Obama's 13 million additions to food stamps and 8 million more in poverty? What are they offering? <laughs> well, uh, Medicaid for everybody, which is a wonderful idea. Public uh, oh, yeah, we could pay education that for that at too. the college level for everybody, free. Free college, uh, you know, free housing, great free daycare. The problem free, is, free, as, free. As, uh, as the... The prominent, uh, the apparent uh, nominee for the uh, Democratic congressional seat in the Bronx and Queens, uh, Miss uh, Ocasio Cortez, uh, she her platform is wonderful. It, it spells out a utopian socialist uh, universe. The reality, going back to what I said, is that capitalism is the best engine for lifting people out of poverty and into the middle classes and uh, and, and beyond. I, I I think that you have to stress those things, but I also think that it is sophomoric of us to avoid the fact that a lot of the hatred directed at, at President Trump, some of it is self-inflicted, and I could talk about that if you want, but a lot of it also is the, the fear. You remember the huge demonstrations the day after the inauguration by women wearing pink hats everywhere. Their problem was the fear that the president would curtail the rights granted under Roe v. Wade. It is a, a, a sticky subject. Nobody likes to talk about it. We kind of roll our eyes. You don't want to hear the other side of it. One of the advantages I've had being at Fox, being with you, is I respect your point of view on that. But I can't say that that is generally held. And there's a fear that the president will no, stack but I respect, the you Supreme know, Court. It, it, this and is proof, the by the way. We become best friends and we disagree. We'll go out and have a drink and a bite to eat and argue, but we're friends. Because I believe in the, in the sincerity. I believe in your Same sincerity. With you. you want the I country to be you're better. An honest person. Absolutely. And, and, Judge, that's missing everywhere. I, I am seeing such a level of dishonesty. Uh, here's the thing they're not going to focus on the so called news channels about all this success, which is, as Geraldo's rightly saying, we're changing the forgotten men and women that have been left behind are now getting more opportunity than they've ever had. And I'm the guy that started as the dishwasher. So I identify with that, with with people that are struggling because I've struggled for 20 years of my life, 25 years. Well, you know, and, and, you know, when you talk about Geraldo, I was in that march in Washington. And thank goodness I, there were two Navy SEALs with me, retired. And at, at the very least, I was protected. But the hate was was it was palpable. And when I asked people in that in that uh, parade or whatever, the march protest, what they were protesting, they just hated Donald Trump. Look, female unemployment, Sean, you talked about it at the beginning of the show. It's at four percent. And you, know, you look at Ivanka Trump. Trump. This is a woman who has spent her adult life trying to promote women as entre uh, entrepreneurs. Look at, what, and look at how they treat her. Finish her. And, look and, at how they and, treat yeah, Ivanka. Yeah, and hashtag and Barry. grab your wallet. And the, and the granddaughter of the president hey, right. for crying out loud. All of them. Look, 
Here's the bottom line. America is better off. The left is trying to shut down the right. I've had my own experiences with it. They call Let us me... fascists. But the fascism is when there's only one way of thinking and everyone else has to be shut down. Last word, Geraldo. I think what happened to Ivanka and her decision uh, to give up her businesses is absolutely shameful. Uh, she and her husband, Jared, have worked so hard for free for the country and for people to attack their businesses by sabotage the way they have, I think is really, yep. really regrettable. Some of these people working in Washington will pay more money, literally in lawyers, than they get paid. All right, don't forget, Judge Janine tomorrow night, 9 Eastern. And when we come back, former Trump White House strategist Steve Bannon, 101 days away from the election, Jim Jordan, and the rest of my exclusive interview with Roseanne Barr. We're on track to hit the highest annual average growth rate in over 13 years. And I will say this right now, and I'll say it strongly, as the trade deals come in one by one, we're going to go a lot higher than these numbers, and these are great numbers. Once again, we are the economic envy of the entire world. When I meet the leaders of countries, the first thing they say invariably is, Mr. President, so nice to meet you. Congratulations on your economy. Since I was elected, we've added 400,000 new manufacturing jobs. Remember, that was the obsolete deal. Obsolete. I used to say, why is it obsolete? We have to make things. Manufacturing jobs are among our best jobs. And we're just getting started. That was President Trump earlier today, literally going over what is now a remarkable economic story since he has now taken office. These unprecedented numbers are certainly sure to help Republicans. We are 101 days away from what I am calling the most important midterm elections in our lifetime. Now, earlier this week, Breitbart News, they came out with a very thorough report detailing seats that the GOP must maintain and hold to keep their majority. A lot at stake. Joining us now, former Trump White House chief strategist Steve Bannon. Uh, ba Here's the thing, Steve. You and I have discussed this privately. This is now battlefield 2018 because they want to impeach the president. They want their crumbs back. They want to get rid of ICE, open borders. They want to keep Obamacare. And they want to cover up the corruption that we have been exposing at the highest levels of government to steal an election. A lot at stake. Sean, you said something that's the most important midterm. I would just like to rephrase that. And I think this is President Trump's first reelect. This is going to be an up or down vote. It's a referendum on the Trump presidency. They are very focused. The opposition is going to be very focused on trying to win the House of Representatives, try to win Welcome Congress to in order to impeach America President Trump and Vietnamese. stop the entire project. Right. Whether it's the economic growth, whether it's the new reorientation of the world's commercial system through trade deals, whether it's his America first national security. Uh, whether it's southern border security, you pick it, they're going to try to unwind it. So this is really, I mean, the Democrats got one thing. They got to do over. In this November, and it's 100 days in a wake up, 100 days in a wake up, we're going to have essentially a national election. And that's going to determine the, uh, the, the second uh, half of the first term of President Trump and I think 2020. So when people ask me about 2020, right now, we are going to have a referendum. It's going to be, I think, very focused on President Trump's record. And I would tell everybody that we're, the way to win this is exactly like we won in 2010, that great Tea Party sweep. You're going to have to go out door to door, ring doorbells, do voter registration drives and get people out. I mean, President Trump has delivered on the action. Now it's time for the populist movement, the nationalist movement, the, the Republicans, let me go Republicans, conservative everybody, movement. conservative movement, yeah. everybody that turned out in 2016, you have to do it all over again. Or... They're, the first action they are going to take under Nancy Pelosi or whoever the Democrat speaker is, is try to impeach President Trump. You know, I went through the numbers, uh, your old hometown, Breitbart. Uh, I think it's you know, a great, it's a great piece, great piece. Uh, uh, but it identifies only 100 seats are, are really up for grabs. The others are safe because of gerrymandering, et cetera. But so they're not in play. But you got 86 of those are Republican seats. And you're talking about the Republicans got to win 61 of the 86. So that's a lot. And historically, and I asked the president about this earlier today on my radio show, historically, seats are lost in the midterm election for the for the party in the White House. How do people save these 61 seats plus? Because I'd like to have a little comfort margin there. Here's what you have to do. We did. Look, we picked up 62 or 63 net seats in 2010. 
And it's not about money. It's about ideas and it's about it's about getting out and turning out folks. President Trump has delivered. He said he was going to take action. He took action was the destruction of ISIS. He took action. Was, look at these economic numbers today. They're just unbelievable. Look what he's doing on the, and the trade deals. What he's doing is reorienting. Uh, the world supply chain away from China. He is fully engaged in, in going back on China on the economic war they've had on us. President Trump has delivered on judges everything he said he was going to do. He's in, either done or in the process of doing. And it's incumbent upon everybody that supported him in 2016. To, this is going to be the old-fashioned way. Okay, this is not going to be about commercials. It's not how much money you raise. This is going to be very simple. It's going to be muscle. The the opposition. Is, is very different than in 16. In 16, Hillary Clinton's arrogance, their cockiness, you know, they, they, they really missed what we were doing in the upper Midwest, okay, to, to really break that blue wall. This time, the, the Time's Up movement and the resistance are very focused, and they're going door to door. It is incumbent upon everybody that supports President Trump to understand this is going to have to be the old-fashioned way. You're going to have right, to go so, door to door. You're going to have to have yeah. pamphlets, get voter registration, knock on doors and get your neighbors to come. This is all about turnout on November 6th. So we're calling this Bannon Battlefield 2018. Uh, and tonight you're giving us like a general's overview as we now get to the 100-day countdown in this. But next week, what we're going to specifically do is we're going to name every district and put it up on the screen so yes. the audience can see. Um, here's the thing, because there are some people that rightly will look at their congressman and they'll say to me and you, Hannity, Bannon, my congressman's a rhino. My right. senator's a rhino. You're asking me to go support this guy. I went out and supported Trump. But the stakes are so high what they want to do to the Trump agenda, which is the answer. At least that's my answer. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, this cuts to the heart of it. This is a national referendum, whether it's a rhino, whether it's an establishment figure, whether it's somebody, either a congressman or a senator, that you don't fully support. That is not the question now. The question is about the Trump agenda. The question is about President Trump and his agenda. And you're going to have to just put, you know, you're going to have to sometimes vote for people that you're not totally comfortable with. OK, and this means some, some establishment figures, some rhinos. It doesn't matter. This is a national referendum. It's an up or down vote on the Trump presidency. If we f take and force everything to November 6th, we're going to win this. There's not going to be a blue wave. And here's the benefit of not having a blue wave. When they don't get the blue wave that they've been selling uh, their grassroots people, they're going to have. They're going to turn on themselves on a civil war in the Democratic Party. And I got to tell you, it's going to make 2018, 2020 much, There's much a easier. Reason. Wait a minute. You just motivate. There's a big And it's already developing. You, you just look at the job numbers. Put aside the success North Korea. And yes, we now have remains from that war coming home this very day. Yes. And no more rockets being fired and a dismantled nuclear test site. And then the Iranian deal he promised to get out of. Jerusalem's the capital and the toughest sanctions we put on Russia. But more importantly, we now have record low unemployment in this country in 14 states for women in the workforce, African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, Asian-Americans, and the military that have been out of work. And millions now have been taken off the food stamp rolls with more jobs available than people on unemployment. This didn't happen as fast when Reagan was president, who, you know, I'm a Reagan conservative. If you look at the actions he's taken, and you look at the results we already have, including the judges and the redoing of the federal judiciary, it's been nothing short of extraordinary. Donald Trump is a historic president. Donald Trump's a transformational president. If you want to keep that transformation going, that's why this November is not a midterm election. This midterm is the first reelect of Donald J. Trump. And everybody's going to, have to put their shoulder to the wheel. It's exactly, Sean, as you remember what we did in August of 2016. We brought the Republican establishment together, the Trump movement together, grassroots conservatives together. We put our heads down and against tremendous opposition in, of the media, the opposition party media, and all the money the Clintons raised. It didn't make a difference. We won, and we won big in a historic landslide. That can happen again, and it will happen again, if people start to focus on what November 6th is, which is a national referendum on the presidency of Donald Trump. All right, let me tell everybody, so we're going to bring you on as often as you can. I know you travel a lot, pretty much once a week from now to Election Day. And so everybody knows Steve does not like doing TV. Uh, but you think this is so important yes. that you want to identify, and we'll do this next week, we will yeah. identify every single district that's going to matter where the real, well, battle 
fight, well, the battlefield, if you will. The battlefield, the Bannon we, battle fight 2018. Well, we will show people, Sean, you've been so gracious to try to talk to me about this, is that I think people need to focus on where this battle is going to take place. And it's going to be, you know, people are going to have to put their sh shoulder to wheel. You know, it's game on. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have to leave everything on the field and no tears. I, I'm tired of hearing the whining, particularly on our side of the football, about, you know, this candidate, that candidate. We've got to stop the whining. We have to get focus on what's needed for victory. We have 100 days in the wake up to do it. All right, Bannon, Battlefield 2018. Next week, we identify the defining races in this upcoming midterm. Steve, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Sean. All right, when we come back, he wants to be the next Speaker of the House. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, why he's running for Speaker, and later more of my one on one with Roseanne Barr. A lot of people are talking about straight ahead. All right, yesterday, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan announced that he was running for Speaker of the House, and earlier I sat down with the Congressman to ask why he's running and what agenda he's going to push. Take a look. Joining us now, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who has announced he is running to be the next Speaker of the House. How are you, sir? I'm Welcome. Rare in studio appearance. Thank you for having me. Um, we're 101 days now outside of the midterm elections. I'm calling it the most important midterm yeah. in our lifetime. Right. They want to impeach the president. If they win, we got to win. Explain. Yeah. Well, if the Democrats get in office, they will go after President Trump because they're, they're, they've went so far left with this socialist, progressive Democrat you know, agenda they have. So this is why it's so critical. And, and here's what's at stake. Think about the last year and a half. Regulations reduced. Taxes have been lowered. Unemployment at its lowest in 20 years. Economy is just humming along. Gorsuch is on the court. Kavanaugh is on deck. The embassy's back, in, yeah. embassy's back in Jerusalem. We're out of the crazy Iran deal and the hostages have come home from North Korea. And I'm forgetting a few things. By anyone's definition, that is amazing year and a half. But what's amazing about that list as well is Congress only helped with a little bit of that, the regulation and the taxes. Congress has got to do a better job, and that's why I want to be the next Speaker of the House. we got to focus on doing what we told the American people we were going to do, delivering on health care, delivering on the border security, on immigration, and all middle, those other issues. How did it happen in the middle of the health care debate? We discovered that there were about 100 House Republicans and certainly seven Senate uh, House, sorry, Senate uh, Republicans that had voted to repeal Obamacare in 2015. Same bill. Same bill, and then they changed when it mattered. Six, six Republican senators voted against the exact same legislation they'd supported before. After telling the Americans, after getting elected in 10, after getting elected, taking the Senate in 14, after winning the White House in 16 on that issue, and then not to deliver on that, we haven't delivered on health care reform, repealing Obamacare, haven't delivered on welfare reform, work requirements for able-bodied people, haven't delivered on immigration policy and border security wall, and certainly haven't delivered on holding and controlling spending. That's what we got to do, because that's what we told the American people we were going to do if they gave us the privilege to serve. Okay, but the president on his own, as you pointed out, has accomplished doing a lot. It. And it, w why is there this reluctance among some Republicans? Is it the president is not the conventional establishment figure? Uh, he's iconoclastic, he's bold, he tweets, he says, you know, calls it out fake news. What is it that some Republicans don't like? It's the town. It's Washington. The swamp is the swamp. They don't like someone like Donald Trump coming in there and changing the swamp and changing the way that town works. There's just this reluctance to ever change, even though the American people said in 2010, we're going to put you in charge of Congress to go change things. Even though in 2014, they gave us the Senate to say, go change things. And even though in 2016, they gave us the White House to go change things, there's still this reluctance. And the president feels it every stinking day because mm -hmm. he is he is bound and determined to do what he told the American people he was going to do, what he ran on, the mandate we got from that election. And the House needs to do the same. We've done some good things, but not near enough. The reform that we need to do, like the president's in doing. And, the, and that's by the way, in to fairness happen. to Paul Ryan, the House has been better than the Senate. Yes, sure has. Sure A lot has. better. But let's go through the story. So we have 14 states record low unemployment. Record low unemployment for African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, yep. and women in the workplace. And then take it from there. I mean, we've had nothing but huge, massive economic, great economic news one after the other. You yep. mentioned the foreign policy successes. And I'm thinking there's a track record to run on. Of course. Let's go campaign on it. And let's also tell the American people, you put us back in power in the, in, in the House of Representatives. We will do what we said. We will help President Trump accomplish what you told us you wanted to accomplish in 2016, what we all ran on. Let's How are do you, that. If you become the speaker, and look, I will support you for I'm speaker. Sure. Because I think the Freedom Caucus has been the most committed to fighting to keep their promises. 
and literally the, the single biggest group fighting to defend the things that are conservative in the country and have helped the president the most. Yeah, we, we talk about when we formed our group three years ago, we talk about the countless number of Americans who feel like Washington has forgotten them and left them behind. We want to go fight for those people, do the things we told them we were going to do. I say this all the time, and I say it because I, I believe it. We make the job of being a member of Congress way too complicated. It's pretty simple. What'd you tell the people you're going to do when they gave you the chance to go serve them, their family, their business? What'd you tell them you're going to do? Go do that and be willing to stand up and have the debate. All too often, we forfeit even before the debate even happens, before the referee even blows the whistle. We just say we're going to forfeit the match. We're going to forfeit the game. Let's have the let's play the game. Let's wrestle the match. Let's make it happen. Doing what we told him. How we're will do. you be different? That, that, that simple. Here's a great example. The omnibus spending bill. We were so poised to win that debate and hold spending down, non-defense spending. Do what needs to be done for our troops, but hold it down on everything else. Because Chuck Schumer had shut down the Remember he shut the government down on Friday? And over the weekend, the American people said, you're crazy. And so on Monday, he says, Shazam, I'm going to open the government back up. Because he was losing in the political, in the public relations world. So he opens the government back up. A few weeks later, we had a chance on that big spending bill to treat our troops the way they deserve to be treated for defending our country and hold the line on everything else. And what did we do? What the swamp always does. We said, no, nope, we won't even have the debate, even though we got a guy in the White House who was great at debating, great at taking the message to the American people. Even though we had all that, we said, let's just do what we always do. Let's spend more money on everything. And the deficit goes up, the debt goes up and the band plays on and the same old, same old. And swamp the president wins. literally squeezed because if he wants the money for defense, because we yes, literally have we sent him a bad bill. All right. Jim Jordan. Good Thank luck. You, We're going to watch this very closely. Uh, do we know when Ryan's leaving? We do not. He said he's going to stay, so I, I take him at his word. All right. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Thank you. And when we come back, more of my exclusive interview with Roseanne Barr as Hannity continues. And here's part two of my wide-ranging interview with actress Roseanne Barr. How should we handle these controversies as a... Um, in other words, Samantha B. she then apologized, or Bill Maher, the stuff that he said over the years that are pretty atrocious. I don't agree with them. I always felt this. I always felt, if you don't like, and I want everyone to watch my show, but if you don't like it, you have a choice. You have all the power right. to turn the dial. Right. But we live in an environment where it's not just disagree. It's like disagree, get an opportunity, don't accept an apology, and try to destroy the other show. I refuse to be a part of that. Because I do believe that in freedom of speech, number one, right. I make my living with it. Number two, I do believe people make innocent mistakes. I'll be honest. I listened to your background and I read all of this stuff about you and your background and your mom and your dad. I, oh, I want to say your, I have the best struggles. relationship with my mother today. I understand. I, we've done the work that needed to be done in my family, and I'm very proud of that. And we have nothing but love now. We want understood, it. but you know, having experienced multiple personality disorders, well, and that getting was over a tough that. one. Oh, I bet it was. Was that like having voices in your head? No, it's nothing like having voices. That's schizophrenia. Okay, I mean, what do I know? I'm not an expert. <laughs> or, or at times, different personalities. It's waking up and not knowing where you are, how you got there. It's uh, loss of time. It's like, wow, you know, just so, disappeared like you would yeah, and no you memory. were another person and didn't know it. No memory of any of it. And people but would like tell when you when I had multiple, you know, it's called dissociative identity disorder. Now, I had um, something like four prescriptions for glasses. Oh. But uh, I, I did wake up and find myself in um, unsafe places and don't, didn't know why I put myself there. And that's just terrifying. And, uh, you know, I know I no longer do that. But, uh, you know, my whole life I spent it like that. One time I woke up in a truck in New York City. I don't, I don't think there's one viewer, Roseanne, honestly, that doesn't have a family member, sure. a friend, a neighbor. You know, With mental health issues? Oh, sir, I think I think everybody watching knows somebody. And when I hear I it, it's what you ABC. just described to me. Sean, it's scary. It was scary. Sean, I told ABC, I don't feel that I am in a good mentally balanced place because I've been working like something like just way many weeks. Leading up to this. Yeah, and going on promotion, cr crossing from Hawaii to New York. And I became 
Ambien dependent, and a lot of people have problems with Ambien. They're not going to joke that away. But I'm one of them. And, uh, you know, I'd find a house full of Triscuits, a pound of cheese, you know. Two Would it them. remember when you woke up? Well, I'd see it in the kitchen. But you wouldn't remember it. You'd see it and you'd say, I must have eaten this during the yeah. night. Yeah. Eggs cracked on the wall. It's crazy. Make, trying to make brownies. <laughs> and not remember it? No, till the morning. But uh, this oh, is like, you know. Scary. Ambien does that to people. Let me ask the last question. No, I, I wanted to you finish keep that going? whole other thing. Oh, you want to do oh, another hour? Oh, dang, now I forgot. I'm sorry. Last question. I start going. Now, what's next? Oh, you? I told ABC, oh, okay. you guys, I'll go and get my meds checked. You knew you, were, you knew you were going to a dark place. I knew I wasn't keeping up because I had this a whole other subject. But, you know, I don't absorb vitamins. And, uh, I, well, I found out that I was really depleted, and that affects your mental health. You think you were doing way too much and not getting the, the, the time that you need? No, because I'm supposed to go to the hospital every eight weeks and get infusions because I don't absorb iron and, and you hadn't done. vitamins. And I just kept saying I'm going to... I wanted that show. I wanted a second season so bad that I, I worked myself, you know, almost to the end. Tell me what's next for you. Porn. <laughs> no, I'm. Uh -oh. No, I really. No, you know, no, I'm kidding. What's next? Porn. There's your headline. <laughs> you know. No, I, I'm just loving doing my own stuff in my own studio. And want to get back on people. stage. You want to hold that. Mic. I do want to go back on tour. Yeah, uh, I, I want to go on tour and do my stand up because my stand up. I just love and look. I love looking out there, and I don't have, like, I have a really diverse audience of fans, and I'm very proud of that. You know, I don't just have preaching to the converted. I got all kind of opinions, and I try to unify what's, what's universal between all of us. All right, when we come back, a really great video of the day. Straight ahead. All right, tonight's video of the day is a sneak peek of TMZ's Harvey Levin's interview with Jeopardy's Alex Trebek on this weekend's episode of Objectified. I've always wanted to be Alex Trebek. Uh, I do great at home. Anyway, take a look. I just absolutely love your show. And one of the things that I always think about when I watch it is I watch you read the answers, and some of them are complicated. Do you rehearse these if there are words that are going to be difficult to pronounce pr pr to say properly <laughs> i uh, i make diacritical marks so that the people at home think oh gosh trebek is so bright <laughs> all right harvey and alex on objectified it's a great show if you haven't seen it yet 8 p.m eastern right here on the fox news channel this show will always be fair and balanced we are not the destroy trump media thank you so much for being with us have a great summer weekend a lot to get to Monday when we get back here. We'll see you then.